If we're not tired, why are we in bed? Well, the sun went down and Mom always made us go to bed when the sun went down. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, but Dag, and correct me if I'm wrong, we don't live with Mom anymore, do we? No, we're on our own, Dad. So theoretically, we shouldn't have to go to bed until we want to, right? Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. So what you're saying is we could stay up until 8 or 9 or even 10 o'clock if we wanted to. Yeah, I don't... Do you remember a time when you were very much not grown up, but thought you were? I'm 11 years old, gosh darn it. I can make sandwiches and box macaroni and cheese. I can basically feed myself. I don't need a babysitter. My parents should go out more so I can stay up and watch Letterman while eating ice cream. I'm tall for my age. I don't know why I have to wait five more years to drive a car. Hey, watch out. I might say a cuss. Here it comes. I'm gonna say it. Crap. There, see? Grown-up language. Angry Beavers is about that. Well, it's kind of about that. It's inconsistently about that. It starts off being about that, but then kind of wanders into other stuff. Look, if there's one thing Angry Beavers is not, it's a singular something. Nicktoons in the 1990s could be split roughly in half, with one half being character-driven shows like Doug, Rugrats, Ah, Real Monsters, Hey Arnold, The Wild Thornberries, and Rocket Power. Sure, they had their silly and surreal elements, but they tended to follow a consistency of character and internal logic. You were here for the stories. The other half of Nicktoons threw that logic out the window for goofy surrealism. That's not to say that The Ren and Stimpy Show, Rocco's Martin Life, Cat and Dog, and SpongeBob SquarePants didn't have realized characters and ideas, but they were shows driven by absurdisms. You were here for the jokes. It's not a super clean-cut categorization, but it works enough for our purposes. If I had to put Angry Beavers into one of these two camps, I would put it in with the absurdisms but with some hesitation. Because if you watch the show's first episode, we're introduced to characters and ideas that seem to have more purpose beyond Mitch Shower's irreverent attitude, and the only absurdist gag comes right at the very end. So let's talk about it. The first episode of Angry Beavers premiered on Nickelodeon on April 19th, 1997, and consists of two segments, both directed by Robert Hughes, who had come out of the Rocco's Martin Life crew. First is Born to be Beavers, written by show creator Mitch Schauer, an origin story introducing two Beaver brothers as they're forced to move out of their parents' house and build a new dad to live in. Older brother Norb, voiced by Nick Bakke, is laid back and irresponsible, wanting to mooch off pre-existing structures without realizing their disadvantages. We're supposed to be building a dam! Give me one good reason why this isn't the ideal place to crash. What's that? Give me another <laughs> Younger brother Dag, voiced by Richard Stephen Horvitz, is more erratic and temperamental, but also more responsible, working hard to get a dam built and trying to get his brother in line, resulting in him getting dragged through one wild situation to the next. That was nuts! Now look, Norbert! We're supposed to be building a place to live! Who says? Don't put me in your little box, Mr. Man. What? Don't tell me what to do. I can do anything I want. So can I. And maybe I don't want you to help me build a dam then. Well, if that's the way you want it, fine. See you around, doofus. Boothead. It's a solid introduction to the characters. But also, like, if you've watched the show consistently as a kid, that's probably not how you think of them. You probably think of Norb as the responsible-ish straight man, and Dag as the wild card, blowing up hippies and stealing killer whales. It's hard to have Horvitz voice your main character and expect him to be the responsible one. You don't expect it from Invader Zim. You don't even expect it from Alpha 5. Horvitz's usual affect is just too over the top for the characterization put forth in this first episode. But the show holds on to this idea for its second segment. And let's be honest, that's what you're here for anyway. Up All Night, written by Victor Wilson, sees the two beavers struggling to fall asleep until Norb realizes, hey, we don't live with mom and dad anymore. We don't have to stick to their prescribed bedtimes. We can stay up all night. 
Once again, Norb pressures and enables Dag into bad behavior, like jumping on the couch, with shocking results. Norby's a chicken! Come on, chicken boy! What are you afraid of? Or making prank phone calls. Or watching horror movies so scary that it's got them jumping at every sound and shadow. It's a struggle, though, because it turns out staying awake when you're tired kinda sucks. I'm gonna puke! <laughs> oh, my sides are enormous! Yeah, it's only 10.34! <laughs> I can't believe it! I think for many of us, trying to stay awake into the night is one of the first challenges of quote-unquote adulthood we try to take on as children. It certainly was for me. I'm not tired, and there's so many things I could be doing during these hours. There's entire genres of television shows that start after mom and dad put me to bed. And don't get me started about New Year's. Why can't I stay up until midnight? Why can't I watch the ball in New York drop? Surely this change in date is a significant event. Of course, now I'm in my mid-30s and I cannot wait to go to bed most days. The first episode of Angry Beavers is all about that element of youth, the two beaver characters being manifestations of that I can totally be a grown-up defiance that a solid chunk of the show's child demographic would have been dealing with. Norb is the smug certainty that doing grown-up stuff isn't that big of a deal, that mom and dad are totally overblowing how hard these things are, only for Norb to meet harsh reality time and again. Dag is the frustrated attempts at actually being a grown-up, trying to put the work in but not having the strength or skills or experience to pull it off. They're two sides of a very specific to children experience. There are stories in later episodes that tap into this a bit, but I don't think I've ever seen a first episode of a show have such a precise idea for what their characters represent and the kind of stories you can tell with them, only to slack off on that idea for the majority of the actual show. And it's not like this episode was rejected by viewers and they course corrected. Up All Night in particular is considered one of the all-time best episodes of Angry Beavers. I definitely consider it as such, and they would end up making a direct sequel to it in Season 3. It's just that wacky absurdisms took over as the show's central source of humor, and the characters adjusted to make that work. I'm not saying that Angry Beavers is a bad cartoon. It's not. It's a pretty good cartoon. But it is an inconsistent cartoon. A cartoon that maybe never quite solidified what it wanted to be. And I think that stopped it from being one of the all-time greats. But getting to the bottom of that will require a much deeper examination. For now, this was just a sample.